In this session, we'll look at how to import a point cloud from Recap Photo into InfraWorks. Once again, we're picking up where we left off in the last session. In that session, I created this InfraWorks model, and then I imported a high-resolution aerial image from Recap Photo. Recap Photo stitched this image together using a collection of aerial photographs taken by a drone. Now, in addition to this image, Recap Photo also produced a 3D point cloud of this site. I would like to insert that point cloud into this model. As a side note, if you would like to review the workflows that got us to this point, I will leave a link to their recordings in the description for this one. To insert the point cloud, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. I will then jump into the download directory containing the Recap Photo assets. Right here we'll find a zip file containing the point cloud. I'm going to extract this. I'll do that by right clicking and I'll choose Extract All. And then I'll click Extract, which will extract the data into the current directory. Once extracted, I'll open up the RCS folder and right here we'll find a recap project file. This contains the data for the entire point cloud. Note that we also have a mesh support directory. If I open this, we'll find a large collection of RCS files. Each of these represents an individual point cloud. When Recap Photo processed my drone data, it created several point clouds. That being said, this RCP brings them all together. So to add the overall point cloud to my model, I will simply drag and drop the RCP into the interface. When the Data Source Configuration dialog box comes up, I'll click Close and Refresh. InfraWorks will then add the point cloud to the model. At first glance, the point cloud appears quite dark. We can improve its appearance by making a quick adjustment to the visual style. Currently I'm using the Conceptual View visual style. I'm going to come down and click the Settings button. And in here, I'm going to toggle off High Visual Quality. This makes the point cloud look much better. Having said that, let me turn this setting back on and I'll close the dialog box. A little earlier, when the Conceptual View visual style was current, I came down and clicked Add to create a new visual style. I called that style Point Clouds, and in this style I adjusted the high quality setting. So from now on, when I'm working on Point Clouds, I can simply select this visual style, and when I'm finished, I can flip back to Conceptual. Let's go back to the Point Clouds style, and then I'll click on Screen. We can then zoom in, and orbit, and review the Point Cloud. As you can see, it aligns very nicely to my InfraWorks environment. If we take a closer look, we'll find that the entire point cloud does not appear to be visible. That's because some of the areas in this point cloud are lower than the USGS surface used in this model. I'm going to zoom out and we'll center the site on screen. Now that I have the point cloud in the model, I need to determine how I'd like to use it. If it's just here for display purposes, such that I have a better context of the overall site while I'm creating a conceptual design, then what I have here is perfect. I could also use the point cloud to extract a bare earth surface. This would provide a lot more detail than what I'm currently getting from the USGS surface in this model. Let's try extracting a bare earth surface. Before we start, I want to mention that InfraWorks completely automates the extraction. It will scan the entire point cloud and identify all points that it believes represent bare earth. The quality of the extraction is directly proportional to the quality of your point cloud. In most cases, point clouds created from LiDAR data will perform better than those created from images. Knowing that, I'm going to give InfraWorks a hand. For instance, I know just by looking at this point cloud that these points in the tree line do not represent bare earth. So before I do the extraction, I'm going to remove these points from the equation. We'll do that by editing the point cloud using Recap Pro. I'll start by detaching the current point cloud. I'm going to come over to the Data Sources panel, and I'll right-click on the cloud and choose Remove, and Yes. We will then switch over to Recap. Here in Recap, I will open the point cloud. I'll do that by clicking the Open button, and then I will visit the Download directory. We'll jump into the RCS folder, and I'll select that RCP file and click Open. The point cloud is then loaded into the interface. When using Recap Pro, you'll find the mouse controls are the same as they are in Recap Photo. Holding the mouse wheel down, I can pan. If I roll the wheel forward and back, I can zoom. And if I hold the right mouse button down, I can orbit. Using these controls, I can quickly review the point cloud. When the review is finished, we'll proceed by clipping out the unnecessary tree lines. I'm going to start by going to a top view. We'll do that by clicking the top hotspot on the view cube. I will then back up a little bit, and then I'll come down to the selection menu and choose Fence. I will then start clicking to define a boundary. Basically, I'm creating a selection that represents the area of the point cloud that I'd like to keep. We'll do this quickly. Let's come down through here. I will include a portion of the street, and I'll double click when finished. If I orbit now, you can see those points are selected. I will then come down to the clip menu, and I'll choose Clip Inside. 
this removes the selected points from screen. Let's go back to a top view, and then I'll return to the Select menu and choose Window. I'll click and hold and drag a window around the remaining points, and I'll click Delete. When finished, I'll click Unclip All to bring back my original selection. So these points represent the points that I'd like InfraWorks to look at when it's creating an existing ground surface. After making changes to the point cloud, we'll resave it. I'll visit the Home menu and choose Save As. We'll go back to that same directory, and we'll overwrite the original RCP file. I will then choose Yes to overwrite the project, and then Yes to permanently delete those points. In the big scheme of things, I'm not losing anything here. If I need to, I could always restore the original point cloud by extracting a new one from the zip file. After the point cloud has been saved, I will revisit the Home menu and choose Exit to close the application. Back in InfraWorks, we'll insert the updated point cloud. I'll go back to Windows Explorer. We'll return to the same directory, and then I'll drag and drop the new RCP file into the interface. Then I'll choose Close and Refresh. Once the new cloud has been inserted, we will use it to extract a bare earth surface. I'll do that by opening the InfraWorks menu, and then I'll click the cube, and I'll come down and choose Point Cloud Terrain. In the dialog box, I can select the point cloud from which I'd like to extract a surface. Currently, we just have the one. Notice there are several settings here that control how the surface is extracted. I encourage you to experiment with these when you get a chance. For right now, let's just accept the defaults and click Start Processing. InfraWorks will then go to work scanning the point cloud looking for points representing bare earth. From those points, it will build a surface and then use that surface to update the existing ground in this model. When the process is finished, I'm going to close up some of these menus, and then we'll zoom in and take a look. As you can see, the surface matches the point cloud exactly. I'm going to zoom out and we'll center the site on screen. And then, very quickly, we'll take a look at Model Explorer. Using this tool, I can toggle the display of many of the items in the model. We can find the point cloud right here. I'm going to click the light bulb to turn it off momentarily. I show you that to show you this. When you extract a surface from a point cloud, InfraWorks will add an overlay to the model. Generally speaking, this overlay represents an aerial image that's draped along the top of that surface. In this case, I don't need the overlay because I already have a high quality aerial photo. So I'm going to click the light bulb to toggle this off. I will then close up some of these dialog boxes. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the surface detail of this new surface. We'll do that by sampling a portion and displaying some contours. I'm going to open the Design menu, and then I'll bring up the Draw Tools, and I'll select Parcels. I will then click to define a small area. I'll double-click when finished, and I'll press Escape. I can then use this Asset card to display contours within this parcel. Let's toggle those on. Once the contours are displayed, I can set their interval. I'll change this to every one foot, and I'll press Enter. I will then click on Screen, and we'll zoom in. And then I'll adjust the visual style one more time to make these contours easier to see. I'm going to select this visual style that I created called Utility View. I will then zoom in a little closer. When reviewing the aerial image, it looks as though this site was plowed at some point. Notice how these one-foot contours perfectly match those rows. I'm sure you'll agree this surface is much more detailed than the USGS data that we got from Model Builder. Likewise, don't forget the elevations of this surface are tied to those ground control points that we used in Recap Photo. When I'm finished reviewing the contours, I am going to delete this parcel. I'll do that by selecting it, and I'll press Delete. I will then close up some of these menus, and we'll flip back to the original visual style. And then I'll use a bookmark to center the site on screen. So at this point, we've got an InfraWorks model that includes a high-resolution aerial image of the current site conditions. The model elevations are also represented using a very detailed existing ground surface. With the addition of a few trees, this model is now perfect to start laying out a proposed design. In the next session, we'll look at how to export our updated existing ground surface to Civil 3D, such that it can be used for conceptual design. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.